Do you win the Premiership? Take us back to that day. Yeah. The, the drought breaker, 37 years. Probably sounds a little bit harsh, but I felt like a, a little bit of a fraud, to be honest. Do I deserve to be out here? Do I deserve to be a, a Premiership player? Kane Lambert is a three-time Premiership player who retires with 135 games to his name. Although he's tasted much success, his story is one of setbacks, determination and never giving up. Overlooked by all 18 AFL clubs in his draft year, Kane took 12 months off football, then spent the next four years proving his ability in the VFL. Finally, at the age of 23, he was given a chance by Richmond. Lambert went on to become a key cog in a dominant Tigers team winning three flags and finishing second in the club's 2018 best and fairest and third in their premiership year of 2017. Now retired due to ongoing hip issues, how does Kane look back on what he's achieved and what does he have planned for the next phase of his life? This is The Plus Side, brought to you by Host Plus. Kane, thanks for joining us. Richard, thanks for having me. Good to see you, mate. It's been an amazing journey, 135 games over eight seasons, three premierships. It sounds pretty good. So let's get right back to the start, though. Kane, 2009, Northern Knights, best and fairest. You've had an excellent year. Draft day comes around. Surely you must have been thinking, oh, I'm a big chance to get drafted here. Your name didn't get read out. That must have hit you like a tonne of bricks. Yeah, it did. It was actually my 18th birthday, Richo, when um, the draft was on. And I didn't expect to get drafted, but I never really thought what it would be like if I didn't. Right. Um, so I was Is pretty that right? Flat. You didn't expect to get drafted? Not really. Yeah. I, I, I did the, um, the state screening and I never really had too many interviews with clubs. And um, I knew I'd, well, all the information I'd been told, I didn't have AFL qualities per se. Uh, the rookie draft was probably the one where they thought I'd have an opportunity. But um, yeah, it wasn't to be. And I was I was a bit disillusioned, a little bit unsure about uh, what, what do I do now. Yeah. So you had a year off though. So you finished up, you had a year off. What, what did you go and do in that year? Yeah, so I did a bit of training at a few different VFL clubs. And I was training for the wrong reasons. You know, I was right. doing it because... I had to, not because I wanted to, and there was a part of me that just wasn't enjoying it. And football was always something I did because I loved it, and it just didn't feel right, and I needed to do something different, so I, um, I decided I wasn't going to play football at all that year. Uh, I did a few different trades and um, yeah. bits and pieces, and I worked out what I didn't want to do. But I spent um, 12 months in a, um, a national can, NCI national can, and so on the lines that I was working on, we were doing paint cans. So basically it goes in, you got the bottom, then the, the outside, the ring, and by the time it gets to the end, I've got to stack them onto the pallets. Yeah. All the people I work with, wonderful people, but none of them spoke English. Yeah. So I, um, you had headphones, so it was really loud. I spent 99% of my day in my own head in yeah, that right. stage. So it was, um, it was character building, I say. I was always going to go back and play footy. It was just I needed to realign my values around it. The things I missed the most was the camaraderie and the mateship, but I didn't think too much about kicking goals or winning premierships and all, all those other things. It was more about being a part of a, a club as yeah. such, and, and I missed that. Uh, but in that year, I, I was still training, and I was I was only a small kid, but in order for me to play senior footy, I needed to get stronger, fitter and faster. So I actually spent that year almost like an a Olympic athlete where yeah. they trained for four years. It was like, okay, I'm going to take 12 months and do this big pre-season and yeah. be ready for senior footy. So you come back, you spent four years in the VFL. Yeah, you, I did, yeah. You're obviously, were you, were you chasing the AFL dream? Was that in your mind at all or was it just you just playing VFL? Yeah, it was. And at times when I did start to think too far ahead about getting drafted, I had to realign. It was more about how can I actually be the best footballer I can and what a recruiter or other people think about me was, yeah. was out of my control. At the end of, I think it was 2014, it was the last of my second nomination of um, being drafted. So I yeah. think they last for three years. And I said to myself, if, if I don't get drafted this year, I, I probably won't nominate. So that'd be, I think that was six, six years of six nominations. And I was also at a stage in my um, personal career where I was getting a little bit dead end for me and I needed yeah. a change. I just wasn't expecting that to be a change to um, professional football. So the rookie draft, 2014 comes, pick 46, you're 23 years of age. Richmond calls out your name. How did you feel? Yeah, I was, um, I was sitting on my laptop. I was waiting to go to work at that stage. I think I was working the afternoon shift. And um, a couple of mates at Williamstown at that stage had, had a lot of interest. I thought oh, it would be great to see them get an opportunity. And five or 10 minutes before the draft, my, my phone rang and I don't answer numbers that I don't have. So I let it go. It went through to my voicemail. And it was Blair Hartley and he said, can you give me a call when you get this? So I gave him a call and he said, look, Kane, we're going to take you out with one of our first three picks in the rookie draft. I was still in a little bit of shock, to be fair. You know, things 
changed so quickly. I hadn't spoken to Richmond at all, like uh, over this whole six years. So I called my boss, said, sorry, mate, I'm not going to come in today because I've got to get on a flight and go to Townsville on pre-season training camp. And uh, yeah, they got us there pretty quickly. We were there that night and straight into it the next morning. We're here thanks to Host Plus, who offer a range of options to ensure you get the right level of financial advice. Kane, is there a bit of advice that you've received in your career that you'll take forward with you in the future? Yeah, I think so. When you know, I've been fortunate when you get drafted, you get all sorts of resources. And the biggest advice I got was actually utilise those resources. And what I found is that people are always willing to help someone who wants to help themselves. So to go out and ask questions, and that, that was probably the, the biggest thing for me. And I'm a pretty conservative type of person. I guess that's the biggest hurdle sometimes, isn't it? You've got the, the resources there. You've got to take that next step and then use them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And you just got to put yourself out there a little yeah. bit as well. So uh, I guess just to ask questions and um, you know, surround yourself with people you trust. First year player kicks for goal. Kicks for goal. Kicks the goal. It's 2015 and 2006 and it didn't happen for you straight away. You had to work hard. Tell us about your first couple of years at Tigerland. Yeah, so my, my first year was a mixed one, but I felt like I was, I was building. I didn't quite feel like I was belong at AFL level at that stage. 2016, I was probably the last in, first out type of player. At that stage, there wasn't really a role that I nailed. Went into my exit review at the end of that year. I had a contract and not sure whether or not I'll get another one. So you were fearing delisting? Yeah, yeah. I was fearing delisting. Fortunate enough, I got another year. I needed to do something different at the end of 2016. I felt I'd got physical side okay. I was able to train and get the best out of myself. It was the mental side of the game that I needed work on. And I thought the mental side of the game was you know, to be resilient and not give up you know, working in a can factory and not complaining, yeah. you know. Yeah. But the mental side was actually grabbing my attention and putting on helpful thoughts. And when you get told you're not good enough it's for so many years, you, you probably start to believe that. And mm. you know, it took one bad game or one bad kick at AFL level to start thinking, I'm not up to this. Right. So for me, it was about how to actually capture those thoughts and bring them back to something that's actually going to be helpful for me. And individually, it was a really turning point for me in 2017. See, so you're third in the best and fairest in a premiership year. So was there a point in that season where it clicked, where you think, hey, I'm a part of this, I'm a regular senior player now? I remember tagging Sam Mitchell at the G against West Coast. I, had, I think I had a pretty poor first quarter and um, Mitchell, as he does, probably had 15 in the first quarter and they said, we, we want you to shut him down. But I, I sort of knew if I was just to shut him down, it's probably, it's a matter of time before that role yeah. you know, diminishes. Okay, how do I stop him but actually still have some influence on the game offensively as well? And, um, you know, I always felt like I had a really good uh, running capacity, so I wanted to use that to my advantage. And, that was probably the game where I felt, hang on, I, I can help this team in, in some form. And that role sort of developed and they started to see how can we fit Kane in. And, and that's probably the beginning of my relationship with, with Dustin and the way they actually started to manipulate that. Martin, brilliant roving, handball over the top. Lambert, how's that start from the Tigers? Well, it certainly worked. You win the Premiership. Take us back to that day. Yeah. The, the drought breaker, 37 years. All the Richmond Army will never forget that day. What was the most memorable part of it for you? Well, there are a lot of memories that day, Richard. I remember you on the boundary line at some point too, but probably about eight minutes into the first quarter, I had a moment where I was looked around and seen how many people were there and realised I hadn't had a touch yet. You know, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm, I'm going to make a fool of myself on the biggest stage. And, and that was when the tool, the mental tools that we'd actually worked on, I was able to grab that and come back to, OK, what do I need to do right now? Greek over the top, Lambert. Oh, yes, 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 yes. After the game, probably sounds a little bit harsh, but I felt like a, a little bit of a fraud, to be oh, honest. I was like, really? This is something you've dreamt of. and. Do I deserve to be out here? Do I deserve to be a, a premiership player? And because you become so process driven, it was sort of like, well, what, what, what do we do next? So it probably took a little bit of, to actually to sink, um, in. to sink in. Yeah, it was euphoric. It was amazing. You know, like all those great things about winning a premiership. But you, you learn a lot of lessons as well. So you got hungry, obviously. Yeah. You come out and you won two more premierships, 19 and 20. Um, just remarkable. It is. It was. It was a process and. The grand finals were an outcome and they're, they're amazing, but it was actually, you know, the, the process of getting there that, that made it all really worthwhile. 
what is next because it can be daunting trying to think about what you're going to do next. I've got an idea of what it looks like for me, but it's not... I want to see where my passions really take me and that's probably the exciting part. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting phase in my life. Coaching? Potentially, there's elements of coaching that I like and there's elements that, that I don't like. Ultimately, what I, what I love is to help people and see them develop and get the best out of themselves. So where that takes me, well, time will tell. Well, Kane, you had a tremendous career. The Richmond Army loves you. I think the whole AFL community respects what you got out of yourself, mate. Good luck. Thank you, Richard. I appreciate it.